Magandang araw, Victory Santa Rosa. Welcome to our online worship service. I'm Vince Katubig. I'm just one of the many campus missionaries here in our church. Nagagalak po kami na makasama kayo ngayong hapon para magbigay ng papuri, makinig ng salita ng Diyos at pasalamatan sa ngayong araw na to. And before we get to worship God, allow me to encourage you in the book of Psalm, chapter 113, verses 1 to 3. Let's all read together. It says here, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Let us all pray. Lord, truly indeed, it says in your word that your name is greatly and truly to be praised. Maraming salamat, Lord, that as we worship you this afternoon, you will be the one to set our hearts uh, in faith, in worship, God, and as we give thanks to you. Lord, maraming salamat, God. We're excited to worship you and to hear your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all worship God together.
So I will stay And I will wait for you So I will stay And I will wait How can I forget the love that set me free? How can I forget you? How can I forget you? How can I forget the love that set me free? Jesus, I surrender. Jesus, I surrender. Open up my heart to all your plans for me. Lord, thank you that as we worship you this afternoon, Lord, you have made known to us the path of life. Lord, we, we were able to hear from you and experience you this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, that our only resort is to stay and abide in your love and your presence each single day of our lives. Allow me to read and encourage you in Psalm chapter 27, verse 4. Let's all read this together. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Panginoon, maraming salamat, God, that we can remain and abide in You, to stay still, Lord, amidst all the situations na nararanasan po namin ngayon, Panginoon, personally and even in our nation. Thank You, God, that as we abide, that as we remain still, God, we were able to experience that peace. Lord, we were able to really gaze upon your beauty, Panginoon, and even witness how you have been faithful, how you have been good, how you have been generous to, to each one of us, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Set our hearts to be more excited each day as we hear from you and as we worship you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Ayan, magandang hapon po muli sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa ating online worship service. Ako po pala si Vince Katubig. Isa lamang po ako sa napakaraming campus missionaries natin po dito sa ating simbahan sa Victory Santa Rosa. And again, welcome and we're glad to see you here joining us, worshiping God and excited to hear the Word of God this afternoon. And to encourage you with our giving, let's turn our Bible uh, in Proverbs chapter 11. Verses 24 to 25. Let's all read this together. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers one. In verse 25, whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Lord, I pray this afternoon that you will be the one to empower us, God, to uh, let us, Lord, give beyond, Lord, what we have, Panginoon. Lord, thank you that truly, Lord, whoever refreshes others will also be refreshed. And this afternoon, Lord, that as we give, that as we give back to you, Lord, as we offer to you, Lord, our tithes and offering, Panginoon, marirefresh din yung puso namin, marirefresh din yung pananampalataya namin, Panginoon, marirefresh din yung kung sino ka sa buhay namin bilang isang uh, mabait, Panginoon, at nagpapalang Diyos sa bawat pamilya, Panginoon. Maraming salamat, Lord, that we can entrust you, Lord, even all the things that we have, knowing all, the, all these things, God, comes from you. Maraming salamat, God, that we can honor you through our finances and we can give back to you this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. The good news now is, uh, the, uh, the online giving is now convenient and safe. You can now see the options to give. Uh, makikita nyo ngayon sa screen. And you can also screenshot it and also go to our to, to, to the description of this video to see the links being provided. And may the Lord bless you as you give. And now, uh, as we give, no, as we give to the church, we're also partnering with what God is doing in the nations. So uh, this afternoon, I'm excited and thankful to God to share the exciting updates with what God is doing in the nation of Pakistan. Let's all watch this video. We go to the nations so we can preach the gospel to places where Christ is not yet known. Our team of missionaries in Pakistan are continuously going to strategic cities and campuses to reach more locals, raise them to become leaders, and plant more churches. Let's learn more about what God is doing in this nation. Salam ji, yahale, greetings from Pakistan. My family and I came here to Pakistan in 2013 to plant and establish a church in one of the cities. Since our church in Lahore has already been established more than five years, God led us into another city to pray and explore the land, which is the city of lights. Karachi is Pakistan's most cosmopolitan city, linguistically, ethnically, and religiously diverse and God has been faithful in giving us divine appointments, open doors and contacts. Two of the locals from the city went through discipleship via one-to-one -one and eventually finished the victory weekend. We started online prayer meeting and after a month of doing so, we invited the small group members to our physical prayer gathering which grew in numbers, majority of whom were students and out-of-school youths. It increased from six locals to a gathering of 32 attendees. Praise God for despite the limitations of pandemic, His move is unlimited. The local Pakistanis from Karachi are the ones taking the initiative to do one-to-one -one with their friends, neighbors, and relatives. Some of the students even started doing one-to-one -one already. We are excited that one day, our established church in the Lord will eventually be handed over to our locals to continue the work of God for this nation. On behalf of every nation, Pakistan, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. You are so important to us. Continue to stand with us in prayer and continue to hold the rope for us as we continue to advance God's kingdom here in this nation. God bless you and bahot bahot shukriya. 
Thank you for your untiring prayers and support as we do the mission of God. Through your partnership, more and more locals get to know the saving power of God and the light of His Word. We will persevere in faith and believe God to continually protect and empower our church in Pakistan to make disciples, reach the campuses, and raise local leaders who will bring the gospel to every city and every campus in their nation. Let's continue to reach every nation and every campus with the gospel. As we continue worshiping God together, we're going to get into His Word and hear what God's Word has to say. We're continuing in the series, Abide. And I have loved this series since the beginning of the year. This great reminder that more than what we do, more than where we go, more than uh, what we're supposed to know, it's about staying, abiding. As, as, as Pastor John uh, reminded us to, to stay, to camp out, to wait. Manatili po tayo sa Kanya to stay with him. And we're going to read now from John chapter 15. And allow me to read this, this really rich text. And we've actually preached about this already last year in November in this church in Santa Rosa. And uh, we're going to share the link there in the comment section uh, for those of you who want to review that message. But we're looking at a different perspective on the text today. John chapter 15 verse 1 to 11 says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that your joy may be, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Let's pray. Lord, help us today to treat your word with respect, to value it and to treasure it and to see what you're saying to us. Very often, God, we read your word and we read it as a list of things to do. We read it as a list of requirements to meet, as information we're supposed to know. But Lord, while those things are, are, are true and valid, help us, Lord, to see that the foundation of all of that is that these are the words that give us life because they talk about how our God loves us. And so as a result, let us treasure your word and hold on to it with all our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The text we read in John 15 is, is an interesting one. And I want to point out one verse that jumped out at me right away. Verse 8 says, By this my Father is glorified that you may bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So prove to be my disciples. Wow. Now that concept, that idea of proving to be a Christian, proving to be a disciple, proving to be really saved is a controversial one. On one hand, you've got people who are super hot. Yung hot na hot talaga sila na patunayan na kristyano sila. At nagmamadali silang patunayan na hindi kristyano or totoong kristyano ng ibang mga tao. These people are like theological police. Right? They're like, oh, look at me. I'm really a I'm here to prove it. And they're quick to judge and condemn others. That you're not really a Christian. Is that what Jesus is talking about here? On the other hand, though, you have people who react to that. And who don't like this idea of proving, who don't like determining what true Christianity or true faith 
really looks like for them. You know what? It's, it's, it's about what God says to you and what you say to God. And if that's true for you, then that's true for you. Who am I to judge? I don't know the man. I know the Bible calls that sin, but maybe for you it's not a sin. There's people like that. Is that what Jesus is talking about here? And I think both of these extremes are wrong. And that's not what Jesus is saying. The truth is much more rich and more life-giving than that. And really what he's talking about here is the importance of knowing, is my faith real? Have I really believed in the right thing? And I think that's a question that more than just applying it to other people, is one that we want to ask ourselves and evaluate ourselves with. And yet at the same time, I don't believe this text is one that's supposed to increase our fear, our paranoia, our pressure. Hala, hala, baka hindi ako totoong disciple. That's not what he's saying here at all. Instead, we want to look at it, and it's a beautiful text that tells us the truth about our situation and also how we can glorify God and in the process show that we really are followers of Jesus. I was reading this text over and over again in preparation for this message. One, because we, like I said, we preached this already last November. And secondly, because even if you read all the way down to verse 17, parang paigot-igot siya. Ang dami niya sinasabi, you abide in me, I abide in you, you abide in me, my words abide in you, you abide in me, abide in my love. Ano ba talaga? It was uh, up, up to late last night. You know what I finally did was I diagrammed it. Alright? So I don't know if you can see on the screen. I took a I, I got a pen and paper and just, you abide in me and then you will bear fruit. And I just started charting it out to help get an understanding and to keep it simple for our message today. And uh, I think I've got it. <laughs> Five statements, this summary statements of this one, that, this, that we can get from this text. That tell us about who Jesus is and who we are as a result. Number one, Jesus is supreme. Jesus is supreme. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only salvation. We see that in verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Why does he say that twice? He says in verse 1, I am the true vine. In verse 5, I am the vine. And there's many reasons that we can say. Last November, we talked about it. That he is the vine. We are the branches. The, the life flows through him into us. Without him, we will not be alive. He is the vine in the sense that he's connected to the root and then we are the branches and we are the ones who, who bear fruit. Yes, that analogy makes sense that way. But why does he say true vine in verse 1? Bakit may totoong vine? Meron bang peking vine? Galing sa changge na vine? Yes. There was. See, the word vine, the picture there was a picture of Israel. Israel was called the vine. In Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, God describes the people of Israel, this people who he had chosen, this people that he had saved, this people he had brought to him to bear much fruit, to bear good fruit. Good fruit that would glorify God. Good fruit that would love others. Good fruit that would evangelize to the whole world. Good fruit that would take care of the poor. That was what Israel was supposed to be. And sadly, Psalm 80, Isaiah 5, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they talk about this vine that does not bear fruit. That God has said, this is not my vine anymore. Hindi ko na to aalagaan. You know, this week, my family and I went camping. And maybe you saw it in my social media or my wife's social media. And when we went camping, uh, the campsite, hindi naman siya totoong camping, no? Medyo glamping siya. When we went camping in the campsite, there are plants that are just overgrown. Weeds. Mga makahiya, kung ano nung mga talahib dyan, overgrown. And then the owner of the establishment had a greenhouse where he was growing lemongrass and other seedlings and vegetables for the campsite. Iba ang halamang tumutubo lang sa tabi-tabi na hindi inaalagaan sa halaman na inaalagaan dahil nagbubunga siya. A plant that grows on the side that does not bear fruit is different from a plant that does bear fruit. And the vine, Israel was supposed to be the vine that bears fruit, that God nurtured and took care of, but it did not 
bear fruit. And that's why Jesus says, I am the true vine. Not that. There's no salvation there. There's no life there. There's no fruit there. It's with me. Jesus is supreme is the first thing we see in this text. Question for us is where are we drawing our life from? Where are we looking? Saan ba tayo tumitigil? Sinasabi natin, hindi, buhay ako dahil dito. Okay ako dahil dito. Magkakaroon ako magandang kinabukasan dahil dito. Magandang bunga ang buhay ko dahil dito. If it's anything other than Jesus, it won't last. That's what this pandemic has shown us. Are you connected to Jesus? Where else is your life coming from? Some of us are wondering, Lord, why am I struggling so much with sin now? Lord, why am I falling apart? Do you know what God's doing there? He's just exposing the parts of our lives that were connected that weren't connected to Him. And He's saying, Kita mo? Walang buhay yan. It doesn't last. It leaves you empty. It leaves you dry. It leaves you unfulfilled. It has bad fruit in your life, bad fruit in your health, in your finances, in your relationships. And he's saying, I am the true vine. Where are you getting your life from today? Jesus is supreme. The next thing I want to point out is that we need to be connected to him, not just look connected to him. Look at this. Verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Oh, so may mga branch raw na nakakonek sa kanya, pero tinatanggal because it doesn't bear fruit. Verse 3, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Well, what's going on here? See, the context of this, of these series of statements in John 15 is uh, unlike the rest of it, in the earlier weeks of Abide, there was a miracle, there was an incident, there was an argument, and Jesus would make these statements. This one is the night of the Last Supper. And a few chapters before this, they were sitting down, and they were having the Last Supper. And in this time, Judas, Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me, and they're all like, who's, who's, who's the betrayer? It's not obvious. And that's when he sends Judas away. John umalis si Judas, and he said, go do what you're going to do quickly. And so now everybody's wondering, okay, there's 12 of us, now there's 11. And after that, Jesus says in chapter 14, verse 31, the verse before this, let's get it up and walk, and they're on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he's going to be arrested. What was going on through the disciples' minds? They're walking in the garden. Why is he talking this way? What does he mean he's going to be taken away from us? Why is he acting so strange? Where did Judas go? That's what they're wondering. And that's where this explanation comes from. Some branches are taken away because they were not really connected. They looked connected, they seemed connected, but they were not really connected. See, when we think about Judas nowadays, we, we think a bad guy, right? Like for those of us who are older here, we think of snidely whiplash, right? Like a, like a curly, thin mustache, maybe an evil-looking goatee. And we imagine that the whole time he was following the disciples, that's what he looked like. You know, oh, Jesus, what about the money? He wasn't like that. Hindi nga halata kung sino yung magbebetri. Kaya nga tinanong nila, sino ba sa amin? Kasi lahat sila mukhang mababait. Pero hindi lahat ng mukhang mabait, totoong connected kay Lord. It's not enough to look connected to Him. The question is, are you really connected to Him? Judah seemed like it. But there was no life going through Him. The motions were there, but the Word of God did not abide in Him. In contrast, in contrast to the, after saying verse 2, Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Baka naparating sila lalo. Kami rin ba yun? Verse 3, Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. After saying that, he gives them assurance to say, No, no, you're clean. You're fine. The word, the word I've spoken is in you. And so I say this part of this preaching with, with fear and trembling. A little bit of fear because on one hand, If there's anybody listening to this who's not really connected to Jesus, 
now is your time to be connected to Him. Maybe you're here and you're saying, you know what, I've been attending these online things, I've been watching this, I've been going through them, but I don't really, really know Him. Now is that it's not enough to appear connected to Him. I want to give people that chance. But on the other hand, I also don't want people who are saved, who have their faith in Jesus, to doubt their salvation. That's not what Jesus was doing. After saying that, he explains why Judas is taken away. He, does, he was not really a part of us. He says, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken in you. And I know that feeling. I know that feeling. I grew up in church. One of my biggest fears for most of my life was, Lord, what if I'm not really saved? What if I'm not really saved? What if I prayed a prayer, but that was just my emotion? Why am I still struggling with this sin? Why am I still going through these things if I'm really saved? And I would question things like that. And maybe you're the same. And you wonder, Lord, how, how can I be sure? You know, in the same way that you, you'll buy an insurance policy and you want to be sure that when you're sick, it's going to pay out. You want to be sure if, you're, if something gets burned, it's going to pay out. How do I know this insurance policy will work? Well, it's the word. Look at that, verse 3. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. God's word is the confirmation, the receipt, the guarantee of our insurance policy. And it's reminded to us, it's, we are reminded by it by the Holy Spirit. Over and over again, witnessing into our hearts. No, you are saved. You have put your faith in me. I will finish what I have started in you. Which leads me to the third statement. We stay connected to Jesus by abiding in his love. Jesus is supreme. He is the only source of life. And that's why we want to stay connected to him, not just look connected to him. And we stay connected to him by abiding in his love. See, he mentions many things here. He says, if you abide in me and I in you, that's verse 4. And then he says, uh, in verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. And then you look at verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, abide in my love. Do you know when we get Christianity weird, when we get it all twisted and messed up, when we become like that judgmental Christian, or maybe like this Christian who says, no, God has no instructions for me, bahala ka na, whatever you feel. It's because we separate. The elements of Christianity, fruit, commandments, abide from God's nature, which is love. All of this makes sense. His words, His commands, bearing fruit, if we make sense of it in love. What do I mean? Sometimes we think of God's commandments as pressure, as hardship. But no. God's commandments are love. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Very often, we're like children who are told, oh, no more devices. Don't eat chocolate. Bakit? Di mo ba ako mahal? Hindi. Mahal kita? <laughs> Kaya ito pinagbabawal dyan. Recently, our, our, our two-year-old son was shouting and screaming that he said, I want to have chocolate. I don't want to eat real food. I want to have chocolate. And so my wife and I said, all right, fine, enough. We're not having this discussion anymore. I prepared a meal for him. I had sugar in one bowl, salt in another bowl, chocolate for soup, and marshmallows for rice. And I said, eat this, okay? This is your meal now. I'm so sorry. I don't know, Nikki. Is that, I know, is that child abuse that I did? But I just said, you want sugar? You, you don't want to listen to Papa? You, you eat this. And I put it in front of him. But then he didn't call my bluff. And my, my two-year-old stopped. He said, no, 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 no. I don't want to eat this. See, sometimes we're like that with God. God gives us a command and we look at it and we take it as, oh, so many restrictions. Oh, so many rules. I can't sleep with whoever I want. What's so wrong with this? If I love her, I love him. And it's like that. We love each other. Why will you get in the way of our love? That's not love. You think it is. 
but it's not. And just like a parent feeding his kids nonstop sugar and salt whenever they ask for it, that would only hurt him. The rules are there because I love him. See, the rules don't make sense if I don't believe God loves me. But if I know God loves me, even if I have a hard time, I can read the Bible and say, Bakit naman? Nahino lang ito. Pero, sige na nga, sabi mo eh. Buti na lang, mahal mo ako. And that's what we can obey. Some of us are here and we're called to reconcile. We're called to forgive and we're having a hard time doing that. And we're saying, I don't want to do that. I don't okay, God, you love me. You've forgiven me. Yeah, I, I guess I can forgive them. Everything makes sense when we remember that God loves us. You remember, look what he says. Abide in me, I ab abide in me, and my words abide in you. You know what is happening here? The word that makes us clean, verse 3, is when we remember that God loves us. When we read this text, even the painful parts, we take it as, okay, Lord, you love me. So it's painful. Even the pruning, verse 2. He talks about the pruning. Why am I being pruned? I'm fruitful, man. Okay, Lord, you love me. I know you love me because Jesus died for me even when I was a sinner. Therefore, I'm sure you love me. And this will make sense over time. That's when we can pray and ask whatever we wish and it will be done for us because we, we are abiding in the love of God. We stay connected to Him by abiding in His love. Do you know that God loves you today? Is that what you get from church, from small group, from worship, from the Word? Because if it's anything else, then there's something wrong. And we need to go back and say, Lord God, I need to be hearing your love for me. As I was diagramming this through the night, I was like, Lord, ito lang pala talaga <laughs> I need to believe that God loves me. That Jesus Christ is in charge. That He is supreme and I want to stay connected to Him and I will as I believe that He loves me. Final statement. When we abide in Him, we bear fruit. When we abide in Him, and we abide in Him by abiding in His love, by treasuring His Word, by receiving His pruning, by receiving His discipline, His correction, and receiving it as love, when we do that, we will bear fruit. The wrong way to hear this text will be to do what I did in the beginning of the sermon. To jump straight to verse 8 and say, I need to bear fruit and prove myself to be his disciple. That's not what Jesus said. What Jesus said was, abide in me. Abide in me. Abide in me. I am the vine. You want to bear fruit? Listen to me. You want to have a good life? Stay with me. You want to be saved? Stay with me. Listen to me. And what am I telling you? I love you. I have a plan for your life. That all have fallen short of the glory of God. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That I will give you a new heart. That I make all things new. That if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. You let those words abide in you, you will bear fruit. It will come out naturally. What is fruit? We talked about this last November. You can check out that message as well. Fruit is really the effect of God's love coming out of our lives. It's a faith, it's a religion that's loving, that's kind, that's gentle. Galatians chapter 5 talks about it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It comes out of our life. And when we have a life of that, kindness, patience, all of those things, people will gather and they will take from that fruit because it's delicious, because it's refreshing. And then they will say, San ba nang galing to? Ah, it's that vine. And it will connect to Jesus. See, the problem with us is sometimes we think fruit is about the people first of all. We start with that. My point yun. John 4 talks about the fruit is, is the salvation, but it starts first by bearing that fruit of the Spirit in our life. 
And we only bear that by connecting to Jesus. And in doing that, prove to be his disciples. That's how it works. It's not about forcing the fruit. It's not about proving ourselves externally. It's about abiding in Jesus. And the proof will be seen undeniably for people to take part in and to glorify God as a result. There was a guy in my small group before. Now he's, he's relocated. He's overseas. And uh, when he got saved, <laughs> it was, hindi uh, naman lahat ng nasasave sabay-sabay. Kahit naman tayo ngayon, even though you've been following Jesus for a long time now, you still have struggles. Maybe you have new ones. And you're wondering, okay, Lord, what's going on here? But the way he fought those struggles was the evidence of the fruit of Jesus in his life. And at this point, he, at one point, he was a uh, college professor teaching in a university that uh, the student population was mostly, in, in my opinion, I'm so sorry, but, but, but major bratty, like rich bratty kids. And so this guy was like, ah, it's so irritated. And then uh, he, he was known for being an excellent teacher who cared about his students, but when he lost his temper, bam, very sharp with his words. But when he became a Christian, here's what happened. His students would act up, he would start to get irritated, and he would look up to the sky. And they would say, sir, sir, what are you doing? And he said, I am asking Jesus for love for me so I can show it to you. <laughs> and maybe for the first time that week, these entitled, spoiled, uh, all kinds of sinful kids would be like, would be praying, Jesus, please give our professor love to show to us. <laughs> After that year, he was having his evaluation with his dean. And the dean said, you know, your, your performance is excellent as always in terms of knowledge of the subject and all of these things. But what really jumped up was your care for the students. Every student in the evaluation said that it really changed. What was this? Tell me the secret because we have other teachers like you who need to learn how to do this. And my friend said, I don't think you're going to like the answer. He said, why? Just tell me anything, whatever, whatever. Meditation, what are you on? What are you doing? And he said, honestly, it's Jesus. Jesus loves me so much, I'm able to love my students. <laughs> and the teacher said, uh, the, the dean said, well, I, I can't use that. You know, there's a non-sectarian school. That's what proving to be his disciples looks like. Not some drive for more numbers, more production, not this endless busy treadmill of proving ourselves to other people. That's not it. That's not it. Now, if you do a lot and you're working and there's grace, then great. That's from God. But if it's just one person, it's just your family, it's just your parents now, and there's grace there, then that's from God. But the point is abide in His Word and then we will bear fruit. So there, John chapter 15, 1 to 11. Jesus is supreme. And because he's supreme, we want to be connected to him, not just look connected to him. And we are connected with him as we abide in his love. All of the things he says and does, his words, his commandments, the fruit bearing, all of that is wrapped around his nature of love. And as we do that, we will bear fruit and prove to be his disciples and bring him glory as a result. Why don't we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us, for watching over us, for dying for us. Holy Spirit, there's so many ways this, this could be applied. And even as I was preparing this, Lord, I, I was just honestly, a little bit terrified to not misapply your text. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to be the one to apply it in our hearts. I pray for those, Lord, who are like the disciples, Lord, who need to hear, verse 3, that already we are clean because of the words spoken to us. I pray for those who have doubted their salvation, who have doubted your love for them, 
who have doubted because of current struggles or problems who are saying to themselves, is God really here? Was I really saved? Why does it seem to work for everybody else and not for me? Why am I struggling with these new things? Why am I struggling with these old things? Instead, Lord, I pray that you will remind us that we are clean because of the word you have spoken and we have believed it, not because of our behavior. And as we abide in your love, it's only a matter of time, Lord, until the behavior will align with your word. On another level, Lord, I pray for those who maybe are like Judas. People who seem connected to you, but are not connected. Who have gone through the motions. Maybe they've been attending church, and yet they look and they say, you know what, I was connected to this, to that, to this institution, but I was not connected to Jesus. I don't have the love of God flowing through me. I don't go to bed at night convinced, assured that God loves me. I have not repented of my sins. I'm trusting other things for salvation. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will convict those people even now. And I thank you that you convict us because there is grace. There is the opportunity to repent. And if that's you now, I want to lead you in a quick prayer of repentance. And it's not the words, but it's believing in Jesus that changes it. And if you say now, Jesus... I need you to save me. Jesus, I have put my faith in other things. I have trusted money. I have trusted people's approval. I have trusted my own strength, my own career for myself. And now I see, Lord, these are not vines that will feed me. These are fake vines. There's no life here. And maybe you've even seen the toxic fruit in your family the toxic fruit in your future, the toxic fruit in yourself. And if you're saying now, Jesus, I repent. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from other things, from this sin, from this addiction. Lord, I can't do it on my own, but Jesus, save me. Save me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and I believe you rose again. So today, Lord, I decide to die to my old life and I want that new life with you. Be my Lord, lead me, Jesus, and use my life to bear fruit and give you glory. In Jesus' name. If you believe in Jesus right now, you pray that prayer and you believe in Him, guess what? The Bible says you are saved. It's verse 3, verse 3, where he said, already you are clean because of the word I've spoken to you. That applies to you now. And we want to encourage you to abide in his love. Abide in his love. To stay connected. That's what small groups are for. That's what church is for. It's not an attendance thing. Okay, if it's not working out for you, go find another one. But the point is we need community. We need people in our lives who remind us of God's love who correct us when we disobey His commandments and we say, what are we doing? This is God's love for you. Oh, I know. When we ask for prayer, that's God's love. In fact, I want to pray for that group of people and then we'll end. Lord Jesus, I pray for all of us that you'll help us to abide in your love. Lord, parang humirap siya ng konti or ng malaki dahil sa pandemic na to. It's become harder. The usual ways we do it. But Lord, I believe it's not just harder, but in some ways, you're also purifying things. You're taking away obligation to attend. You're taking away pressure to be in every single meeting. You're taking away this comparison, this performing from those of us Lord, who are used to being uh, top students in school to compare our grades with others. Instead, Lord, you're inviting all of us to abide in your love. Help us to do that throughout the day as we do our quiet time to share our faith to other people, that we'll just abide in your love. God loves me. God's got me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. He works all things out for my good. Grabe ka, Lord. Wala kang katulad. And as we abide in that love, I thank you that fruit will come out. I pray, Lord, that that fruit will benefit many our families, our communities, our classmates in school, our office mates, our neighbors, people who need that fruit of love, joy, peace. Let it overflow in us, Lord. And when they see it, 
I think it will bring them to you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was our uh, fifth week of um, Abide. I want to encourage us to stay connected to Jesus. And that helps by having other people around us as well. If you need prayer, you want to talk about this message, please join us in the Zoom fellowship immediately after this. Some of our pastors and leaders and members will be there to pray with you. Or maybe it's not in the Zoom fellowship, but you should call one of our brothers and sisters in the church one of, and say, hey, I need to remember God's love. I just need to hang out again. I need to abide in His love. And in so doing, we're going to bear fruit and it will glorify Him. Let's receive the blessing of God as we go now. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious toward you and turn His face to you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.